this country, this church, and it'll even something that God gave me to do. A sense of the right. Okay. But there are so many people that God, and you know, when people think, well, I made it on my own, that's not true. It's not true. I can help this somebody because they didn't do it on their own. They had an opportunity, they worked hard, but there are many people that work hard, okay, and never get anywhere. They don't get anywhere at all. You know, the man, there's a car in this country called Tesla. The man who made Tesla is not Tesla. Tesla was a man that was involved with electricity. Okay? He basically got nowhere. I'll give you a better example. I'm sure you all know about television. When you ask most people where did television come from, Lots of people, not about today, but they were years ago, they would have said from a man named Sarno, who was the head of the National Broadcasting Company. That's not where television came from. Television came from a Russian man, an Orthodox Christian, who lived in this country, who really put most of what we call today television together. The only reason that he has no notoriety is because he was foolish enough to go to another Russian named Sarno, who was not an Orthodox Christian, and he asked about it, and Sarno gave him a job, but he kept all the technology, and Sarno became very wealthy, and this man did not. So some people, when they get a blessing, they get good, they don't give anything back with it. They hold on to it, they keep it themselves. Because of why? Why do people do that? Because they're afraid. Maybe I won't have enough to me. Maybe they won't get enough left over when I need it. That's lack of faith God. And let me go, let me just go a little bit on the, uh, if you don't mind, the, uh, the pandemic. All of you here are here by faith. You're here by faith. For the simple reason that this pandemic is real, the coronavirus is real, and if you didn't have faith, you wouldn't be here. You stay home. You say, well, you know, I, I can get a chance of getting it. Of course, hopefully, that, that type of logic is counterbalanced by that you can get it anywhere. You can go to the store, you can get it. Uh, I mean, how many of you, when you fill up your car, I mean, mostly there, do they have people that fill up the car anymore? You do yourself, right? How many of you, when you put gasoline in the car, grab the nozzle or put a napkin in your hand and grab the nozzle then? And, uh, well, the point that I, I make sure I have a napkin with me or a piece of paper towel. And I, I don't know who's on the end of that. We became very aware of that, right? Okay, so you can get it from almost anything. One of my great fears or concerns is that my home instant doesn't. Give it to me. Because when he licks me, he licks me sometimes, you know, a little bit too much, but I, I love him. But the point I bring down is that you're here because you have faith. So a lot of times people, when God has given something, not only don't they give back, but they give something bad. They give something bad. It's really a tragedy because why life balances out and what you don't do here is going to affect there. That's right there in that moment. Say, well, are you saved by your works? No, you're not. You're saved by the love of Jesus Christ. However, St. Paul says, show me your faith, I'll show you love. You need to do something with it. If all you're going to do is for yourself, or even for your children. You know what? When parents die, and we talked about this before, we have a reading today from Russell. Oh, God, it's so, he told me Buffalo, I got I to chill. Buffalo, we don't know. Anyhow, he's got three beautiful children. When he and his wife, and they God you for many, many years, when they stand before God, Christ is not going to ask them if they did what used to be, used to be normal, that parents raised their children, took care of their children, clothed them, fed them, housed them, got them into school, I mean, unless you want to pay off like some people in California do, but they got them to school, got them their education. Well, maybe that's not so complicated, but it was when I was a kid, so I'm going to go by my time. So they say, God, well, you know, we fed them, we loved them, we sheltered them, we told them, no. God's going to ask you both the same thing as He's going to ask all of us to do this. Did you bring them to me? If you think that Jesus Christ really cares whether you are a professional or not a professional, He doesn't. He cares how much you love Him and how much you love others. That's what He can do. So if you spend your whole life grabbing and keeping and holding on, when you die, you can say to Jesus, well, I made all this money, and Jesus doesn't care. He doesn't care about the money, because the money doesn't go to God. I remember years, years ago, a lady came to church during the week, and she wanted to light a candle. She 
said, Greg, could I light a candle? I said, yes. She said, I don't need money. I said, well, go ahead and light the candle. She said, no, but I don't need money. I said, lady, light the candle. She said, but I don't need money. I said, believe me, I tell you, I guarantee you, God is not going to get that money. He is not going to get the money. He'll never leave this church. He'll stay right here. Go ahead and light the candle. So we have people that hold on to everything and do nothing good with it. And that's exactly what this means. I mean, thank God that there were dogs. The dogs came and licked his sores. Okay, the rich man couldn't care less. He ate like a pig, he ate every day, he got everything he get in, was dressed very finely, couldn't care less about the beggar, he's totally ignored him. And I told you, and I, and I kept on doing it. Okay, you should be all carrying around at least five one dollar bills in your cars. I believe you take five one dollar bills and put them in the glove, you know, the thing in the middle. I guess I don't like to put a glove at the moment. I don't know if it's close anymore. Anyhow, keep it there, the five singles. And every time you come to an intersection where somebody is asking you for food, roll or push down the window and give them the dollar. And if you think, well, no, he's going to buy that. Okay, fine, don't give him the dollar. But the next person you see, give him two dollars. Until you run out of the money. What are we talking about? Five, six, seven dollars? They're going to make or break anybody. Because we don't know who God brings into our presence that they may need our help. Stop rationalizing whether or not somebody needs something. I told the story before because you did it, but I repeated it. But I remember years ago, a person said to me, and he had obviously been drinking, and he said, uh, I'm really hungry. Could you give me two dollars? And I had that idea to go. I don't carry money. I don't carry money because I have five children. When you carry cash, listen to me. When you carry cash, you're in trouble. I saw my kids, I'm carrying money. I saw the money. I didn't carry money. I had money with it. Point is that I gave the two dollars. And somebody came and said, Your father, he's probably going to go drink that. I said, Maybe he needs a drink. Who am I to decide? When you give something, don't follow it. What happens? You just give it and let it go already. Goes on, he says in verse 26. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf of separation. Fix that they which would pass from here to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from there. Okay, That's exactly it. He got it on the first one. I am terrible when I draw. It's like Jekyll and Holly. I become this terrible person. All of a sudden, I'm thinking things that I shouldn't be thinking. Every day, I'm going to embarrass you. Every day in the morning, my daughter has to say, she's running away from it. She goes right by the church. She sees it, the flags, and the rest of the And in that conversation, she'll say, 
church? What did you say to No, no, that's not true. That joke in front of you. You don't own the road, okay? You don't own the road. You don't know why somebody might be in a hurry to get ahead of you. Just let it go. It's only traffic. You're only going to spend three minutes less sitting around doing nothing. The point I'm bringing out is that I don't drive because I don't like driving up. And I'm fortunate that there are people that will drive me. I was supposed to go down today uh, to uh, Lulu's to give my mom what I want you to please keep ready for roads because then roads might be leaving us soon. And right away, Lulu called them like Mr. Bogus who arranged the road. Not because I'm, I get angry, because I fall asleep, so I will tell you honestly, if I try, but this is, I fall asleep. But what I'm getting at is that if we realize where our short warnings are, then we can do something about it. Stop justifying it because of what somebody else does. I don't care what somebody else does. God doesn't care what somebody else does. He cares what you do down there. He doesn't care what your mother does or your brothers. You know, like if, if your brother uh, then it slaps you and you slap him and just happens to be there to think your mother sees you slapping him and she didn't see him slapping you. You know what you can say to your mother? Ma, he hit me first. Right? They hit to me first. That's not the right attitude. Let it go. Finally, it says in verse 31, And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, the one rose from the dead. For God will have And can the yes, not one, the Musa, but then the Ali. What did it come to walk in your mina and I want the Yasuki, Yasa, the Muna? What is this taking? If they don't listen, if they don't listen to someone with that, they won't listen to someone with that. What, what, what are they kind of reaching on? If they won't listen, if they won't listen to the Moses and the prophets, they won't listen to someone with that. What, what is that going to be anything to you that's going to happen to Jesus? If they won't listen to us, they won't listen. It's like they're referring to how if they don't listen. It's like kind of like Old Testament.
Say what? And the poor man who 
was really rich. Which side of the belt do you want to be on? And you have to wait till you die to get out of the right side of the belt right now. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. 